continuing chapter 5, section 1, which deals with angles and um, degree measures. So right now we have 32 degrees, 28 minutes, and 10 seconds. We want to convert this to a decimal, and we're going to round it to the nearest thousand. Okay? So right now we definitely know we have 32 whole degrees. So we know we're, we have 32 whole degrees. What we got to figure out is how are we going to convert the minutes and how are we going to convert the seconds to where we have a decimal. So tell me something you know about how many minutes are in a whole degree. How many total minutes are in one whole degree? Yeah, so one degree. Here we go. One degree. In review, one degree equals 60 minutes. Well, we don't have a whole degree, do we? We have what? We have 28 out of 60. So if we wanted to find the decimal that goes with this, you could say we have 28 out of 60. We have 28 minutes out of 60 minutes. And this would give us an approximate value of how many degrees we have. Now, this is kind of a ridiculous decimal. You guys got to have the decimal for that? What is it? And then repeating, so 0.46 repeating. So that's how many degrees we have. We have 0.46, think about this, we have 0.46 repeating degrees. That's, I'm going to highlight it so you guys can understand that 28 minutes is actually equal to 0.46 degrees. But we don't just have 32 degrees in 28 minutes. By the way, if we wanted to have a final answer, if it was just 32 degrees in 28 minutes, our final answer would be 32.46, and we would round that to a 7, and we would write degrees, and we would be done. But we don't just have 32 degrees and 28 minutes. We also have to worry about the 10 seconds. So I'm going to go, let me, let me uh, erase this part, because I'm not totally done yet. Hmm. Let me do this in red. 1 degree equals how many seconds? 3,600, very good, 3,600 seconds. Well, we don't have 3,600 seconds, do we? We have 10. So what fraction do you think of it? That's right, 10 seconds over 3,600 seconds. Now we're going to get another decimal. Now we're going to get a decimal. You guys got that there, Kate? Yeah. What you got? Repeating. So right here, we have 0 .0027 repeating. This represents also the amount of what? Degrees. Which if you think about it, kind of makes, it should make a little bit of sense if you realize, wow, yeah, 10 seconds is really, really a small fraction of a degree. So what we're going to do in the graph and calculator is we're going to take these and we're going to actually add them together. So we're going to take the graph and calculator right here. Okay, let's clear this out. We're going to do 28 divided by 60. We're going to add 10 divided by 3600. And we're going to press enter. And that's going to give us the best approximate value for our amount of degrees. And it said round to the nearest what? The nearest thousand? So 28 minutes out of 60 minutes and 10 seconds out of 3600 seconds equals this many degrees. So what would be our final answer? So we're going to put 32.469 degrees. That's our final final answer. Now, students usually get the, they'll, they'll be able to do this correctly with the positive, but sometimes the negative confuses. So we're going to start the negative. How many whole negative degrees do we know we have already? So we're going to we put right negative 73 point something. That's the last time you're going to worry about that negative sum. We already know that's that's the correct amount of degrees. Now what are we going to do? We're going to take 14 seconds, and what are we going to do? Divided by 60, and then we're going to take 35 seconds, and we're going to divide it by 36. 
And we're going to take these and we're going to simply what? Add them together and that's going to give us the decimal that we're going to put right in. Okay? Can I show you guys where students make a mistake? Here's where students make a mistake. Let me show you. They do negative 73 and then they add um, how many ways? How many minutes do you have? 14? They add 14 divided by 60, and then they add 35 divided by 3600, and they get this. But what did I tell you not to? I'm like, don't worry about that negative sign, right? We already know it's negative. Well, I told you simply to do what? Take the 14 out of 60 and add the 35 out of 3600. Add those together, you see that 0.243? That's what we're going to put. This 0.243, we're going to put right here. Students usually don't mess up on the positive, they will mess up on the negative, because I want you to understand that negative sign just lets you know that which direction am I going. I'm going as the clock, I'm going clockwise. Okay. All right. By the way, everybody, these are very, very easy. Okay. If it tells you to do 1.5 rotation, I want you guys to write down in your journal one rotation. One rotation clockwise equals negative 360 degrees. One rotation, that's what it's just saying. What do you want to write, Anthony? That's okay. One rotation counterclockwise is going to be one. Positive 360. Okay? Why does this make this really easy? Because if I say I want you to go 1.5 rotations clockwise, all you have to do is take 1.5 and multiply it by negative 360, and that tells you how many degrees. Negative five. All right, now I'm just going to do a little animation here. Help you see the what we just did. So let's say, everybody, that this is your x-axis, all right, and this is your y-axis. So we have an x and a y. If I started right here, and I said, okay, I'm starting here, it says to do what? It says to do how many rotations? 1.5 rotations clockwise. How many degrees have I gone? I've gone 360 degrees. It says go an extra what? An extra half. So I finish over here. So what does that mean? It means I started here. I'm going to follow the follow the the drawing here. You start here and you go all the way around, right? And that's 360 negative 360 degrees. And we keep going what? We keep going another half. So we keep spinning it one and a half times. And that's why the answer is negative 540. Okay? By the way, you're either going to be multiplying it by negative 360 or multiplying it by positive 360. That's why I want you to have this in your journal in case the question says, I want three rotations clockwise. I want three rotations counterclockwise. You're going to have two different answers. One's going to be positive, one's going to be negative, depending on what it is. Okay? You guys should be able to figure out number six on your own. On number seven, this is the last problem you can do in your journal today. It says, I want you to identify all angles that are coterminal. And then it says you want to list one positive and 
again, I want you to list one thing. When it says identify all, it's impossible to identify all. It's just going to be an infinite number. Okay, so we're going to create a formula. This right here, everybody, this part is going to be a simply a formula that you could use to find an infinite number of coterminal angles. Okay? Where, by the way, where are we starting at right here? We're starting at 43 degrees. We're going to, in your journal, we're going to draw a picture of a 43 degree angle. So I'm going to x-axis, y-axis, I'm doing my best to draw a 43 degree angle. And if only I had a compass, be nice. Oh, I should have a protractor. That would be pretty quick. 43 degrees, 43 degree angle. So we're going from here to here. That's 43 degrees. Notice which direction did I go? I went counter clockwise. Okay? So this positive 43 degrees. So if I wanted to list one positive answer, how many more degrees would I have to go to finish right here? Right? This is my coterminal. Coterminal means it's where you Finish. How many more degrees would I have to turn? We have to go an additional what? An additional how many degrees we have to go? Okay, that's that's the negative. But here, which which direction am I going? I'm going going counterclockwise. So if I'm going counterclockwise. I want you guys to understand if we're at 43 degrees, okay, we're going counterclockwise, that means we are what? Adding 360 degrees, which puts us at what? 400 and. Okay. We're at 43 degrees. We go 360 degrees counterclockwise. Oh, I'll forget that word counter. Counterclockwise. So we have one positive coterminal angle is 403 degrees. Just, just add 362. Now, you're right. No, that, listen. You're right. The other one you said was what? 317? But that would be actually be the negative version. So it says list one negative, so you could say the negative version of a coterminal angle is to be. So you could say, what did we start at? We started at what? 43? And what are you going to do this time? You're going to take away 360 degrees, right? And we get negative 317 degrees. These two angles, everybody, these two angles are considered to be what? They're considered to be coterminal with 43 degrees. They all end up at the same place. So, for example, if I said, hey, I'm 403 degrees, you're 43 degrees, you're negative 317 degrees, we all finish where? The exact same spot. Okay, we're going to do one more thing and we're going to find the formula that goes with all of these. Alright, so the final thing we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to identify all the angles that are coterminal. Okay? So what did we basically do? We either added 360 or we took away 360. And where did we start? We started at 43 degrees. So here's your formula that you guys can use to find any number of coterminal angles. You start at 43 degrees, so we're going to say plus 360, and I'm going to write the letter K. And I want you guys to represent. K represents any negative or positive it's not redundant. It's not redundant. integer. Because integers are either negative or positive. Okay? But I want you to understand, if I plug in a positive one, you're adding 360. If I plug in a negative one, you're subtracting 360. Okay? So you could keep plugging integers in and getting different coterminal angles. Okay? 